Hello, I'm Jeffrey Fox again. I'm the instructor for Big Data Applications and Analytics. And this is Unit 3 in the Sports Analytics or Sports Informatics uh, section. And here we got we the first two units discuss baseball at a sort of elementary sabermetrics and a advanced video based sabermetrics um, level. Now we're going to discuss other sports which are at least as available in the open literature. Not nearly as advanced in terms of their clear use of analytics to make precise decisions. Now, they are clearly uh, pretty advanced in using big data to display um, qualitatively what's going on, which is a rather different uh, type of application. So at the beginning of all our units, we have our basic uh, uh, rallying cry for the course that we are, um, which it says in one sentence that we use clouds. We do data analytics here, sports analytics. We do it collaboratively. We're processing big data, typically video or uh, sensor or event based um, data for sports. And we're solving problems in X informatics or X analytics or EX, where X is here, sports. And these are the values of X I found for um, informatics on the web, but it does not include sports. Um, I did for sports and analytics, as I mentioned, certainly exists on the web. And all this is part of our data science curriculum. And this is the overview course for that from an application perspective. Okay, here we have our favorite picture. And um, it has all the X informatics we found. And I added here the um, sports analytics, because uh, we pointed out for sports, we have analytics defined, but not um, but not informatics. So, and we can probably take individual sports and also find those defined uh, precisely. So, we now have a, even a slightly bigger pitch than we used to have. So let's get on to the real heart of the lesson. Thank you very much. So in this unit, unit three, we look at um, briefly at uh, several types of um, areas. We include wearables as uh, in part of sports informatics because they effectively are, are used um, broadly in lots of sports to, to, to monitor the athletes. And in a lot of consumer sports, the wearables are actually the only monitoring you do. You monitor the heart rate and other types of uh, characteristics of the person doing the sports. And a general theme we will see is so-called spatial visualization. All these sports are performed in three dimensions, and you can visualize what's going on in the same three dimensions. So there's an important visualization component. And the sports we look at are more or less uh, in more or less detail, a soccer, Olympics, uh, American football, basketball, tennis, uh, and horse racing. And um, these are all, they say, they're all pretty qualitative in this particular section. And we're going to start off in this uh, lesson with where. So this is lesson one uh, in this uh, unit three, which discusses wearables which has a strong emphasis on consumer sports, although it also has some relevance, of course, for professionals. We discussed this and just because of the nature of the presentations I looked at, there is not a lot of um, quantitative data on uh, which I could find on wearables. It's that's still a developing field. <coughs> and uh, we want to point this, this particular presentation points out the importance of stakeholders and the different factors that you bring together uh, in, the, in this and actually in several other um, sports analytics from the qualitative point of view. All right, so um, this material comes either from the, uh, this is an introduction to the whole lesson. And it comes from the um, MIT um, conference, also some I found on SlideShare. 
And uh, these, as I mentioned, are the uh, fields we're looking at in order. Um, wearable soccer, Olympics, NFL, NBA, tennis, and horse racing. And as I said, there's a big emphasis on visualization and not on predicting success. Although we can expect that to, um, the prediction of success to be a gro of growing importance and is actually already applied in some of these areas. It's just not nearly as well discussed as it is for, um, for baseball. Here is a talk I found on uh, a broad overview. It actually happens to discuss baseball, cricket, tennis, and soccer. Although again, I mean, cricket, as I mentioned, is a sport has some similarities in structure to baseball, and I would expect it to be reasonably straightforward to apply um, the same methods used on baseball to cricket. Tennis, at least, is one-on-one. -on -one. And so you have actions, uh, somebody hitting the ball in a certain place, and that action is um, is very clearly defined. It's a little different from baseball, because in baseball, the pitcher starts at the same point and throws the pitch from the same point. Whereas in tennis, you, um, uh, and so does in cricket, the bowler bowls the ball from the same point and the batter hits it from the same place. So cricket and baseball have the, uh, have the con convenience for making predictions that they have a sort of well-defined um, scenario which keeps on getting repeating. Whereas in tennis, you are, you are keep on hitting the ball, but each shot comes, I mean, the serve comes from the same place. The subsequent shots come from all over the court and depend on the previous uh, result from the, uh, with the opponent. So it's not so easy to use uh, straightforward approaches. And soccer is, is in poten potentially even more complicated because there are 11 people on a team and uh, any given activity involves far more than one person on one team versus one person on another team. So here are some of the things that you can do with sports analytics. What we concentrated in baseball was predictive analytics. Also, in our baseball discussion, we pointed out the importance of the fiscal model, which impacted a lot of uh, decisions and allowed you to define how to do things. Let's just add that here. Of course, here we have the coaching or management decisions. Uh, there's distinct things, each um, team to be as a coach and a manager, and they're doing different uh, parts of the sports process. We have here the experience which we're providing to people. We have uh, the analytics defi defining the operation of the team. And then we have the fans. And we already discussed in for baseball, the fans interacted with the fiscal model in a slightly complicated fashion. So this is true, this type of uh, breakup of the different types of um, uses of analytics or where analytics uh, impacts is um, pretty broad. And <clears throat> when it comes to the wearables, uh, then we're going to be looking at these types of activities. Features of the player, their speed, their heart rate, the, the hydration level, their breathing rate, their fatigue, and their pain. And that's what your wearables would give. Of course, in baseball, you looked at the speed of the pitch, but uh, you didn't tend to focus on heart rate, the actual uh, um, physical condition of the player. You, Although that was always implied that you could do that, you're more interested in actually the performance of the player at the hitting hitting or fielding or pitching. And of course, the coaches, uh, I gather, like this technique. If I was a coach, I'd like this technique. It has relevance in all cases to fantasy play, because it provides you the data to drive the fantasy. And um, we have the real-time enhanced data. We saw some of that in the last uh, um, unit for baseball, where the uh, the multimedia video was uh, gave you enhanced uh, visualizations of the play. And that's broadly true, that in all sports, um, the, the big data, the video recording or the monitoring can be tr translated into a better experience for the viewer. Um, of course, in the whole of 
interactive um, multimedia social media experience gives you uh, better ways of getting in contact with fans. And given that we can study all these things here, we can actually, and also the physical, what the player does physically and whether this is likely to cause problems with his, um, with his body, uh, you can reduce injury and, um, and of course, that's one aspect. And then we already discussed um, marketing, the uh, the networks like the Yes Networks for the Yankees. And we didn't discuss betting, but it's obvious that betting, any data that allows you to plan a better um, matchups can also take a given matchup and actually be translated into a more precise odds for anybody betting on the results of a sports event. Here's some uh, pretty uh, consumer devices. Um, we have wristbands here in the Nike Fuel accelerometers. We have Oakley snow goggles. We have here a, a golf swing analyzer from Freebase. Um, <coughs> here we have a tracker for activities from Jawbone. We know Google Glass. I'm just waiting for my Google Glass to arrive, which allows you to uh, not actually not not in principle, it can track you, but it actually is typically used for the person to track what's going on in the outside world and have a richer uh, interaction. And here we have from Babolat um, some digitally enhanced um, rackets for uh, playing various um, ball games, um, like racquetball and things like that. So. These are these are these are examples here of monitors, which we didn't really focus on for um, baseball because these are mainly looking at uh, how the players are performing, which is say almost dominant for the consumer market because um, the, the, the people doing the exercise want to know how many calories they lost and things like that, and. Uh, they need to compare that and how that progress is. And there's lots, not lots of interesting uh, processing done from the analytics. Here we have a nice picture from a website, which uh, I downloaded liveethos.com. And it tells you uh, how with these this wearable is all equipped so that you can um, and it comes not only with uh, the monitors and the wearable, but also with the software, which allows you to, to uh, you know, really do your uh, bodybuilding in a very precise fashion. And um, it, you know, really goes into great detail into your heart uh, activities, your muscles, and uh, have uh, their uh, properties. So. Here we are, get toned, get strong, get lean. Everybody wants that, unfortunately, it's not so easy. And you have to actually sit here making lectures. Difficult to be doing all this nifty uh, exercise. So, we'll come back to this plot here. So this is just an illustration to set up this discussion of sensors and um, these sensors are either on the person or on the equipment, the thermometers, hygrometers, accelerometers, skin monitors, and gyroscopes to measure your positioning. And these are just some of many, many, many sensors. We don't have temperature, it's obviously another one, pulse rate, things like that. Here's another example of um, a consumer. Um, Sensor, this is uh, effectively a ski, uh, sensor enabled skiing. And it actually is um, has a battery, it lasts for eight hours, and it, rate, it sends back um, by, by uh, wireless uh, all sorts of information about your acceleration on orientation. And uh, hopefully, I'm not a, I must admit I don't ski, but I'm sure that uh, Skiing is a pretty tricky sport, and so knowing more about exactly where you are and what you're doing can be pretty helpful. So we have a three-axis gyroscope and a three-axis accelerometer.
This puts it all together. We have this is one we saw before the census. Then we have the uh, biometrics, weight, muscle, health, height, and then we have the context. Well, what's going on? Where are we using it? The tactics, the venue, the pitch. We understood uh, from baseball the importance of the these various things. The public. We understand they drive the fiscal model, which drives decisions. The nature of the opponent. And which are the good tactics which comes from these details, one on one um, interactions? And this is an interesting slide, which we haven't really. It tells you the various stakeholders. So the athletes, this is what we normally think about, um, although we often usually translate that into lessons for the teams. So the athletes and the teams are our usual focus. And um, this allows, you know, here's what you can do with the analytics. You can uh, give them data to do better, and they have a record of how well they did. The teams and the clubs and the managers and the coaches can use this to get more money by performing better. The equipment manufacturers can look at this data and uh, actually uh, build better equipment, either better sensors or just the physical equipment, the ski. Uh, uh, the skis can be just made be made better, um, and then you can actually um, sell that equipment and make money. We have the ruling bodies setting rules, um, like the cricket uh, authority tells bowlers they're not allowed to bend their uh, arm more than a certain amount, else because you have to effectively bowl with a straight arm with with a minimum uh, deviation, and that can all be measured with sensors. And then, of course, we have the interaction between the media and the fans, and there are the fans. And the fans, uh, this is this particular talk was motivated by telling stories to the fans and giving them a, a motivation based on the stories created by the by the athletes' performance. We'll see that in the last slide of this uh, lesson. Here plots the types of um, value of the data for various types of athletes. Here, the, the this end of the curve, we have the professionals, the really great people. Here we have the people in <coughs> so-called pro-ams. Uh, maybe these are the replacement players for baseball, and uh, these are uh, more of them. And uh, but they're, they're still actually uh, premium players, and so uh, you're using the data to uh, design better equipment, more precise equipment, because these are the people who are going to use your devices to the maximum extent, because there's greater, much greater value here. Um, here we have the heart of the uh, use of the of the uh, analytics and the and the wearables and the sensors, which is uh, just Providing your main sales and your commerce. And here we have what you might call niche markets. These are the people who are not not near them mean, and they're either got special interest or they're like me, maybe especially bad. And um, <clears throat> so they also provide, they can be divided up into subgroups, and that those subgroups can be looked at for optimizing your equipment. And this is a giant. This you know, this talk, particular talk is a very uh, um, business-oriented talk. This is this is wearables from the business point of view. And here is how you put. The, we had these pictures of these three aspects that were broken up into subgroups. Um, and then we go through analysis. We make decision. We take actions on those decisions. And here they are, keep emphasizing that we create this um, magic kingdom for the fans, which are, have stories with heroes in the stories. And those heroes um, are reported by the uh, wearables and the video and the things like that. And those same um, data actually drive better performance and more heroic uh, achievement by these players. And here we have our favorite hero, Michael Jordan in basketball, uh, dunking a, uh, 
uh, a uh, shot. And so this is how our heroes are created, or in this case here, Michael Jordan is certainly a legend as a great basketball player. So that's the end of this section here. Uh, it's a rather qualitative section, partly because the comes the data is mainly from um, the business point of view, but also because this field is at this stage qualitative. Because unlike baseball, most other sports, especially consumer sports, apart from some very simple averages of heart rates and things like that are not terribly uh, quantitative in what they're doing. And there's not these, they're not, um, I don't know, so what we have is that wins above replacement. We would have, I don't know, for weight, you would have pounds below, below the uh, typical uh, um, consumer. So you would, uh, you would um, get ratings for your fitness. How about fitness? Compared to average or fitness compared to, to, to people you could drag off the streets who might be below average. So nothing like that. Uh, there's not so much of that at the moment. We're still at the beginning of this field. So thank you very much. This is the end of the first lesson of, the, of this third unit on general sports. And we just focused here on some overall introduction to other sports. Uh, but uh, we focus a little on wearables, and what it says wearables are part of the Internet of Things, and uh, they can also be discussed as part of that uh, topic. And we also know that this is a, the Internet of Things is growing very rapidly, and some people say 2015 is the year of the Internet of Things. We will see. So this this time you can see these uh, qualitative slides erupting into. Uh, a lots and lots of quantitative apps which you will download and use and things like that.